So if you've got no or low sales on eBay right now, you've been doing good and awesome, your sales are starting to drop off, I would honestly recommend doing this. It's probably the best thing that I could recommend that works for the vast majority of resellers across the board. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about slow or no sales on eBay. I've talked to tons and tons of people and probably over half of every person I talked to in the last couple of weeks is having some sales related issues on eBay. Now, if you've already done the, the bare bones, basic minimum, you make sure your photos are good. You've got good keywords, good titles, your price structure is okay. You've got everything else in there that you can think of. You're not missing anything. You've got good feedback. Those are all basics. Everybody should be worrying about all those. Now, what I would recommend, again, and I've said this many times, is ending some listings in South Similar at a routine basis so many days a week, over and over again. Constantly be doing this. It refreshes your listing and creates a whole new listing. Now, we've done this since October 28th around 55 or 60 times. Three days a week we do it for the last three plus months, plus we've been doing it. So we've been testing all different sorts of things. Sometimes we'll run a sale, sometimes we won't. Sometimes we won't do sales similar on some days to see how long we can stretch it where it's going to still give us the biggest bang for our buck. If I stop some of these activities, it immediately drops down on my sales. So it's something you have to routinely do to keep those sales flush and coming in. If you've got a ton of items and you can list hundreds of items a week, you'll have the same basic boost. Your older items, though, won't be shown as much by the way eBay does search results these days. We're going to hop over now. And we're going to show you how to do those steps as well as discuss some other issues to pay attention to as you're doing your daily routines on eBay. So we're in the hub right now. This is my store. The thing that works the best, as I said, is the end listings and sell similar. Now, we've been running this three days a week. We've been ending listings three specific days a week. And then we're running sales right afterwards. Now, I've done this now for 50 times. We've At least 50 times. I've, I've ended listings and then I sold similar, as well as various combinations of running sales, now, we also test, too, so I might test a couple thousand uh, with me selling similar versus a couple thousand I don't do it to in the same category, same type of items. Um, no matter what I do, what always works the best is simply ending listings and sell similar. That's, that's literally what works the best. And as soon as I finish that, if I go in and do a sales and markdown, which I'll show you here in a minute. I know I've talked about this before, but I, I tell you, for us, with the quantity up, this works far better than anything else. Now, if I just run sales three days a week, rotating two or three days each time I do it, yeah, I don't get the same results. Now, we've also tested with just running sales to see if we need to actually sell similar as often as we were. So I dropped it down. We do sell similar on some items. We'd run the sale, not run the sale, and we'd test it. So we've done all of that 50 plus times or so to see what works as well. Again, if I don't run the sale, the sales end, I don't get as many opportunities to send offers to watchers, and I don't get as much offers. Now, if I don't do end and sell similar, again, the amount of offers and, and uh, offers and sales I get drastically goes down. Now, again, this is all based on how I set my store up. I've got 3x pricing on most all of my items. So if I'm doing a, a 3x, I can run them on sale. Again, I'm going after a perceived value. I'm not worried about trying to be the lowest. I'm not worried about, you know, undercutting somebody or anything else like that. That's not important in what I sell. Having good service, good items, good photos, well, well detailed information, you know, good keywords in the whole works. You can price it a little higher. You can sell it better than someone else who may have the exact same item. We do it all the time. So let's just end a few just to give you an idea here. Now, if you want to change around which listings show up first on here just click this if i click this again it's going to show the newest first so right now i've got it set up to show the start date for the oldest ones first this way i rotate through all of my inventory so i'm not missing anything i don't really care about the categories anymore or anything else like that the whole point of ebay is to get sales so this works great so i'm going to go up to the action button i'm going to end listings 
And I'm going to, again, end these 200 listings. This is like a double check when it asks you again. So we're going to let this do it there. So now, I've again, I've been paying attention to how many listings I actually had up, which I would honestly recommend you do. So before you actually do anything else, make sure you know how many listings you have. So in case something goes wrong, you can keep an eye on it. So I, I had just a few moments ago 29,718 listings. So now I'm going over to Unsolds. Click uh, listings here, unsold. So I just double opened another uh, browser window here. And now those 200 are going to be right here. Um, I've got uh, zero quantity options. So I've got all 200, as you can see. Three of those are already sold. So they're going to be ended and not relisted. So this is part of what happens when you do it the way I set this up. So let's click over here. So we're going to pick the ones that are active. Again, these are all active. They have quantity. So we're just going to sell similar. It's going to go ahead and import the listings that we just picked into here. Now, sometimes you can up the prices 50 cents a dollar, a couple dollars or something, sometimes lowering it the next week or the next month. That can get you some boost. But again, I've tested all of this. What always works the best for us is the end listings and sell similar and then immediately start a sale, which I'll show you the basics on it as well. So we're just going to go ahead and submit these going to confirm these it's going to go ahead and relist them and now if there's any that have errors it usually pops up an error message here none everything's fine click OK now before I do anything with these that I've already relisted it's going to not say that they're relisted because we sold similar we didn't relist them we sold similar so this can get people confused so now we're gonna pop back over here and we're going to reload now we ended 200 listings there were hundred and ninety seven that were active so when I hit hit and reload this page here, it's going to be 715 listings we should have. It's 29,715. So we're just going to pop it up here. We're going to let it do its little thing. And that's going to be my number. Now, if your numbers don't match when you're going across and doing this, something is wrong. Now, I've got opportunities to, to, I've got some offers I'm waiting on right here. I've got nine offers that came in. I've got 29 more offers that I can send out. Now, this is without me running sales or without me doing anything extra. They've ended now. And we're going to go and look at that in just a minute here. Before you do anything, though, we can see that the quantity of those listings is added back into active. So all of the ones that we ended and then we sold similar, we need to delete these so we don't list them again. So I'm just going to delete them. They're already relisted. They already, already exist as a new, complete, new listing. So I don't need any of these. This is an error, too. So if you just click off here, click back on unsold, they're actually gone, even though it says they're not. So here they are. I think I actually got a couple items just sold. Um, so now we're in the marketing tab on my hub as well. Let me reload it just to make sure there isn't anything else that I'm missing here. So we're on the marketing tab here. All of my sales have ended. Now, I use the same sales over and over and over and over again. Once you create a sale, all you got to do is keep copying it. This is the easiest part with, uh, along with the sell similar. Sell similar, I do two to 3,000 listings three days a week. And that is the best way I find if I'd run them for two days, do it again in two more days, do it again in three more days. It's enough uh, of a, a break so I don't have to do it every day but it still gives me a big boost when I do this now these are the four that I usually run sometimes I'll just run one of the 10,000 item uh, sales and sometimes I'll run them both if I'm running tests I may just run one now this top one and this bottom one on mine are identical you can do a duplicate and keep running. I can run the same one. So if you've got, say, 100,000 listings, you can just have one single uh, sale that you run and just run it a few times to get all your listings covered. So we're going to do the bottom one here. I'm going to copy it. Uh, I, you can pick whatever you want. I'm just doing 30% off here again. I'm doing a 3x. I'm marking off a 1x of it. I'm still getting 2x of what I want. So double what I expect to get out of it if it sells at this price. So now select items here. We're just going to touch on this real quick. I've shown how to do this in many videos. If you want to see how to set this up on your own, it's, it's readily available on some of my other videos. You're basically just picking the categories and things like that you want. You can highlight them here based on the value of them. So I'm not going to do any discounts on anything under 10 bucks. I'm running them all the way up to here. So I picked my specific store categories. i got postcards, military, movie music, TV, sheet music, 
uh, collectibles. So this gives you an idea on what I'm discounting on here. You can set it up however you want. I've got 11 different categories and 11 different pricing structures uh, typed in here. Again, I can change this all I want. You can do anything you want with this. Obviously, some of these may not be included because of some of the other sales that I do run. So I don't have to pick anything. Once you've set this up once, you're done. You just keep copying it over and over and over and over again. So I'm going to save it. It's going to come up to another screen here. Now, this is my internal name for my sale. No one else can see this but me. Obviously, everybody watching this can. But the ones I always check, keep items in the sale and block revisions for price increases. I always mark that so if there's another sale coming on or anything else like that, they're not going to crisscross. There's not going to be anything messed up. The other thing I always do is start now. Well, there's no sense in waiting. I'm doing it now. It doesn't matter. The end time is what matters on here. Now, today I'm going to run it. It's a Friday, so today I'm going to run it through Monday. This is my three-day sale. Every Friday I run a three-day sale, so I don't have to do anything on my store for maintenance on the weekends. I have free to do whatever I want that way. Uh, so we're just going to pick that. And the other thing I always do, on Mondays I have every sale that I run ends at the exact same time, which is 7 a.m. Now, if you don't run sales uh, or haven't run them before, sales, if I'm starting a sale of 10,000 items, it can take like 15 or 20 minutes for all of that sale to go on. So just keep that in mind. This isn't going to be immediate. They start on sale one at a time. So it takes a long time to run through 10,000 listings in here. Obviously, most people probably don't have that quantity, but that's how I do it. Now, once I've created a copy, I delete the original one. So I know exactly what I have here. There should always be four. It covers 27,000 uh, listings worth, 28, depending on you know how many items I have in a specific category. So, so that's the gist on the sale-wise here. Now, one other consideration here. Even though I say they're all going to end at 7 a.m., this is California time too, keep in mind. Even though they're going to supposedly end at 7 a.m., if I run a sale and I've got all of my store on sale, it could take an hour, hour and a half for all of those to end. It'll say processing, processing, processing. And usually one at a time, each sale will end on its own. So one sale will end. As soon as that one's done, another sale, even though it says 7 a.m. So don't count that 7 a.m. always to be sharp 7 a.m. All my listings will be done. That's when it starts the process to start ending your listings just like it started them one by one. Now, you can see some totals it says that I sold on here. The report itself, the, the sales numbers you see here, all those sales numbers are are people who bought it at your sale price. They didn't ask for a best offer. They didn't purchase it any other way. These are sales that are strictly from your listed sale price. Nothing else. There's no bartering or anything else. So the majority of my sales aren't done that way. So the majority of my sales are offers to watchers or offers coming in to me. Again, 3x price structure. So even with the sale, it's not so bad. I do mix up sales based on the types of items as well, and that can help. Some I don't need to do as much because just a little boost is enough. Now, I don't do any promoted listings. I haven't done them in a couple of years. If you do promoted listings, you may not need to do all these other steps. I can pretty much guarantee you, though, from what I've personally seen, if you're not doing self-similar on older items, they're not being shown, even if you promote them. The Promoted Wise promotes things that eBay thinks will sell the best. And if your item's been up for a year or two and you haven't done self-similar on it, eBay is just going to assume it's not a great item. They don't have to promote or even show your item. That's in the user agreement. So again, keep those thoughts in mind when you're doing this. Now, one more thing here that I want to point out. We've been very closely watching item specifics, the recommended ones we have not filled in. Very, very closely. Every day, someone writes it down in the morning and at night what that number is. We check it and compare it against sales in same categories and likes to likes to see if eBay's doing anything. From the honest way it looks, to me, from this, the fact that this number almost never fluctuates at all, even though we sell tons of stuff, that eBay is ghosting anything that's recommended. So if they're telling you, giving you, uh, hey, get your recommended done, you should do it, it'll help you, they could be ghosting these listings even if you're selling similar from the way it looks. They can have a, a radio button on there that, in behind the scenes that we don't know about that says, hey, if they're not filling in the recommended, we don't have to show it. And I'm wondering at this point if that's exactly what they're doing. And I've had other people tell me the same thing. I'm not just the only one who's watching the item specifics recommended to see what's going on with them. So 
as much as I hate, and I do hate putting the, the worthless, total waste of time item specifics, and we are starting to do 50 or 60 a day or more to see what happens. We're going to do another 1,000 or so at this point, and if those start to sell and the rest of them don't, I'll have a baseline to compare the other ones to so I can say, yes, eBay is ghosting listings if you don't fill in even just the recommended ones. So that's just another concern that you may have. If you've got a ton of recommended, keep track of that number. If you're not selling any of the recommended and it's just the other items and they've been up for a while, eBay could be ghosting them. And again, ghosting them so even the, the, the self-similar won't do anything. I can tell you, though, me ending listings and selling similar and then running the sale gets us more revenue than anything else I do on there. And for us, I do it like clockwork. I set up a schedule. We do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We do the same routine every single week now. We're done testing. It works. It's the best way to do it for us. If you've only got a few hundred listings and you're not getting any big, big traction, your sales aren't going in, I would say suggest maybe doing self-similar on 20 of your listings a day just so it gives some action on your account. The more action your account has, the more it seems that things will get moving and you will get offers and things like that too. Now, one more thing I would suggest. If you've got offers pending, offers coming in, before you sell similar, make sure that those offers won't be canceled out by you ending the listings if you're doing end and sell similar. I know for sure because I double-checked that none of the listings on my awaiting offers here, um, in fact, we'll just click on it, none of these, these items here would have been ended because they're all uh, way newer end dates than that. So that's what I look at. So these are all items that I have offers on. They're not going to go away. I can go ahead and collect them. And on send offers out, I used to send them out before I started the sales. But what I find sometimes, if they don't get that till later, they're busy or something, and I run a sale, then they're going to say, hey, what's going on? The prices are, are out of sync. Sometimes my offer may be just a hair higher than the, than the um, sale is. Sometimes it'll be lower, and it'll be worse for me. So... I've found that it gives some confusion with your buyers if you do it. So nowadays, once the sales start, then I go in and I'll send offers out after the day. If you're going to end and sell similar and you want to you know, accept offers that came in first, that's fine. It's up to you to do it either way you can. Let's just go back to here for just a second here. Now it says pending, and what it's going to do, it's going to change to processing. It might have already, yep, here we go. So it's already on processing. It's already starting to run the first couple of the listings, and it'll keep increasing that number as you go. When it's ending, it's going to come back after it starts the end time, as soon as it's 7 a.m., it's going to do the same thing. It'll turn from active to processing, and then it'll show up as ended. You can see all of them, I, I do it at the same time. These all were ended on the same day at the very same time. Start times may be a little different. They kind of vary depending on you know the, the uh, time av available here. Sometimes I have a little more time. Sometimes somebody else does them, and we're showing a couple other people how to do the same thing as well. So it's not just always going to be the same person. So we've got them spread apart, apart a little ways. But again, the key is having them end at the same time so you can come right back in when they've ended and go ahead and start them over again. So if you can see the dates, it started. This one ran for two days. This one's running for three. On Monday, I'll do the same exact thing. I'll sell similar 3,000 listings. And as soon as I get done doing the sell similar of 3,000 listings, I'll go right back to this page. I'll copy my sales, and then off I go. Now, one warning here. Don't run uh, copies on a whole bunch at once. You have to wait for your first one. This first one has to process before I can start another one. Because if I do, they crisscross. And at the end of the day, they get confused. eBay's, e eBay software does. And I may only have a 2,000, 300 listings or 200 listings or a couple thousand instead of 10,000 listings in each sale. And I may have to run a bunch of sales to fix that. So... I let this one completely process and show all 10,000 items before I go ahead and copy the next one down the list. Before the end of the day, in the next hour or so, I'll have all of these hopefully up and running as sales. So it'll roughly be 28,000 items that will be on sale with this one here. It works the best for me. I don't really pay attention to the graphs, as I said, because, again, those graphs are based on your items that sold at your, your sale price and nothing else. Nothing else. And again, that's a small percentage of what we, we uh, sell that way. The whole point of me running the sales and markdown here is just to get the watchers. The watcher count always goes up when I do this. It'll constantly go up.
But anyway, that is my best suggestion on fixing your sales. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Maximum fluoride protection at your fingertips.